are meme coins better or worse than the attempts at legitimacy that scams or accidental frauds have been? Ledger, that's a question to you. Welcome to Bankless, where we explore the frontier of internet money and internet finance. And today on Bankless, we explore the frontier of meme coins. You can't seem to go anywhere in crypto these days without stepping in a meme coin. Whether you're on Twitter and you're seeing D's post about Book of Meme, or you're on Farcaster hearing about DGen, or you're on literally any other chain trying to incubate its own meme coin ecosystem, meme coins have dominated on-chain activity in the last month or so. Is this all the future of finance is good for? Are we destined to discover even more degenerate levels of financial speculation? Is the only thing that we can muster as an industry new types of on-chain PVP in hopes of getting rich? Or... Is there something to celebrate in meme coins? Are meme coins just a bad name and maybe we should call them culture coins instead? Are they a big F you to the man, to VCs, and a logical reaction to the world of private sales and investor accreditation laws? Is there something to be celebrated in meme coin culture? Most importantly, are meme coins going to be the thing that brings back retail into crypto? So far, things look like they're heading that way. So what's next? Before we answer these questions and talk about who is on the episode today, a message from our friends and sponsors over at Prime Staked. Prime Staked is a liquid restaking token that provides liquidity for assets that have been deposited into Eigenlayer by converting staked ETH into Prime ETH. Users can capture the Ethereum protocol staking yield, Eigenlayer points, and the Prime ETH XP points all while remaining liquid. So if you want to catch up on your Eigenlayer point farming, you can get 156 bonus Eigenlayer points per ETH deposited into Prime Staked. There is a link in the show notes to get started with Prime Staked today. Today on the show, we have two guests debating the merits and costs of meme coins in crypto. Ledger from the Up Only podcast thinks that meme coins are financial nihilism that creates room for bad actors and grifters. Steven Cesaro from the Alfalfa podcast think that meme coins are something to appreciate and celebrate. I think there's something to both sides of the debate. I think both have valid points and both bring some solid wisdom into the conversation. And ultimately, in my opinion, how meme coins will be remembered will be determined by the types of people who create and shepherd them, which means I personally don't have very high hopes for the optics and conclusions of meme coin mania. But Bankless Nation, I'll let you draw your own conclusions after listening to Steven and Ledger hash it out here on the podcast today. But first, a moment to talk about some of these fantastic sponsors that make this show possible, including my preferred place to trade meme coins for the one meme coin that I own. And that place, of course, is Kraken. If you do not have an account with Kraken, consider clicking the links in the show notes getting started with Kraken today. If you want a crypto trading experience backed by world-class security and award-winning support teams, then head over to Kraken, one of the longest standing and most secure crypto platforms in the world. Kraken is on a journey to build a more accessible, inclusive, and fair financial system, making it simple and secure for everyone everywhere to trade crypto. Kraken's intuitive trading tools are designed to grow with you, empowering you to make your first or your hundredth trade in just a few clicks. And there's an award-winning client support team available 24-7 to help you along the way, along with a whole range of educational guides, articles, and videos. With products and features like Kraken Pro and Kraken NFT Marketplace and a seamless app to bring it all together, it's really the perfect place to get your complete crypto experience. So check out the simple, secure, and powerful way for everyone to trade crypto. Whether you're a complete beginner or a Season Pro. Go to kraken.com slash bankless to see what crypto can be. Not investment advice, crypto trading involves risk of loss. It's everyone's favorite season in crypto, tax season. And crypto tax is always an absolute headache, especially for all you DGENs out there. But it doesn't have to be a nightmare. That's where Crypto Tax Calculator comes in. The software built for DGENs by DGENs. As Coinbase's official global tax partner, Crypto Tax Calculator focuses on making complex transactions into easy ones, supporting over 300,000 currencies across Ethereum, Arbitrum, optimism, as well as a thousand other integrations as well. It's as simple as connecting your wallet, pulling in all your transactions, and following the automated suggestions to quickly and accurately calculate your tax obligations. Plus, for all the airdrop farmers out there, Crypto Tax Calculator has your back, as they are consistently adding support for new and upcoming Layer 1s, Layer 2s, and all the airdrops that you're currently farming. 2024 is the year when the DGENs do their crypto taxes with speed and confidence. Make taxes this year easy and affordable with Crypto Tax Calculator. Sign up at CryptoTaxCalculator.io and get a 30% discount with code BANK30. Click the link in the show notes for more information. Uniswap is revolutionizing the DeFi space, not just by enabling swaps, but by empowering you to swap smarter with a comprehensive suite of products for faster, safer, and more informed swapping. Say goodbye to pop-up wallet extensions. The Uniswap extension is coming soon, and this extension is not a pop-up. It is a sidebar in your browser that persists no matter where you are on the web. This means you can swap, sign, or send, and receive crypto anytime, anywhere, without obstructing 
your browser window. But that's not all. The Uniswap web app now features limit orders, so you can buy and sell any token at your price on your terms without having to watch the market. And the best part, limit orders are built on Uniswap X, which means no gas fees. Also new to the web app is the data and insights pages with real-time candlestick charts, price data, transaction logs, and detailed pool data, all integrated into the Uniswap web app. All of these new releases come together to create one platform to help you swap smarter every time, no matter where you are, on web, mobile, or on the extension. Click the link in the show notes to sign up for the extension waitlist and download the mobile app. Start swapping smarter with Uniswap. Bankless Nation, I'm excited to introduce you to Steven Cesaro from the Alfalfa Podcast. For those who aren't familiar with Steven, think of Van Spencer, except replace VC with DGen, and that's about proximate to where Steven is. Uh, he's my personal favorite market DGen commentator, uh, generally speaking, on the pro meme coin side. Steven, welcome to Bankless. Thanks for having me, David. Cheers. And of course, Brian Crosgard, aka Ledger from Up Only Fame, also LedgerCast, also his own project, Flip.xyz, and also the only crypto person who lives in the state of Alabama. Ledger, welcome back to Bankless. <laughs> Hey, that's not true, actually. There's there's a pretty strong crowd here. Name in three more. Uh, I, I'm not doxing. Dox people. three more. <laughs> yeah. There's uh, y- y'all remember Messi from uh, he's he's gone oh, yeah. he's gone private over the recent over recent years, but mm-hmm. he's in he's in Alabama, and um, there's several more, but I'm not I won't go any deeper. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to talk about meme coins today. Um, Ledger, you were putting out some tweets uh, the last couple of weeks talking about how you just can't can't get on board the meme coin train. I was listening to Steven here on his podcast, Alpha Alpha, talking about like the merits of meme coin. And I kind of want to just like put these two conversations uh, together on the same podcast. I've got a little preamble that I want to run with to kind of start this thing out. Um, meme coins in crypto are nothing new. They've been a part of the inse- crypto since they were incepted in Dogecoin in 2013. Uh, now in 2024, we have the members of the dog with hat community crowdsourcing $650,000 to put a dog with hat image on the Vegas sphere. Uh, in 2014, uh, we had Dogecoin funding the travel of the Jamaican bobsled team to go to Sochi, Russia to compete in the Olympic Games with the Dogecoin on the bobsled, of course. Uh, this was a very heartwarming uh, story, I would say. The Jamaican two-man bobsled team faced financial hurdles in their quest to go to Sochi, Russia, uh, in which uh, they got overwhelming response from $184,000 from Dogecoin supporters in 2014. It was a pretty cool story. Um, The best part of this Dogecoin story, I think, is the story of his founder, Jackson Palmer, who intended to satirize what he saw as the speculative degeneracy in the crypto space. So he abandoned the Dogecoin project, stating that he no longer wants to be associated with cryptocurrencies and having sold all of his Doge long before it ascended to what it is known today. So we have a dog themed crypto coin fundamentally that does nothing unique with a founder that abandoned it and a community that stepped in to support it for the lulls and is now a top 10 crypto asset by market cap, $23.3 billion, crazily followed enough by SHIB at a $17 billion mar- market cap. And so this is kind of where I think meme coins as a whole got incepted into the crypto industry with Dogecoin. Dogecoin was the first thing in the crypto world. It's like, hey, we can, we can make financial assets that are also jokes. Uh, and also look at it, it's got like over $10, $20 billion market cap. Uh, and so this has spawned many debates about what should we do in this crypto industry with this newfound power that we have, which is the freedom to make financial assets for any reason whatsoever. And so I kind of want to just maybe start this conversation here, not really even talking about pros, cons, not even bring, beginning a d- debate or anything, but make, maybe just bring in your own guys' perspective about like how you see the, the role of meme coins in the crypto industry. Uh, and then maybe we can go into more aside specific conversations. But uh, Ledger, I think you, you've been in the industry longer than all of us. Just kind of start this conversation off for us about your, your long arc of relationship with meme coins, speculative coins, shit coins, uh, as it relates to the crypto industry and kind of just what you've been thinking about them over the arc of time. Yeah, I, I guess that, you know, crypto has been an experiment forever. And so, you know, the vast majority of coins do begin as some form of experiment. Um, and sometimes with a degree of pointlessness, however, um, I think when we've seen the most success with coins, there's been quick like community gravitation towards like something slightly larger of an idea. So even if you take the Dogecoin example, like it's this general positivity around like the dog is cute. And then like Jackson kind of codified it by abandoning it, like kind of a Satoshi-esque moment by 
going away, it turned it into a, a truly kind of community driven thing. And I'm not against that. I'm against when you can't establish like any form of justification for existence beyond dumping on others in a PVP environment. And in 2013 and in 2023 and in 2024, 99 plus percent of these are for the purpose of dumping on others. And, you know, nobody's truly standing behind anything with some form of conviction. I'm not like anti-community by any means. I think, you know, the, in, and people will say like Bitcoin itself is a meme coin. And that's true, but it's got a mission statement and it's got there's an understanding. But it does build. And I've said this forever, like Bit, Bitcoin's value is by network effects, prompt you know, between the provenance um, of time and the the network effects. It's not different from a code perspective from Bitcoin Cash or Bitcoin SV or, you know, whatever, whatever all the like thousands of Bitcoin forks from um, the 2010s. Like, it's not different in that way. It's different because of network effects and because of its idea and because of the story of Satoshi and the early believers and the method of governance that it's taken over those years. And those are the things that you need. And yes, you do need to develop them. Um, but there's been very little demand by, uh, let's say, the customer base, the people that are willing to buy these, to shill these. There's been very little demand for any story if they think there's any potential for number go up for them to say, like, let's put it on our timeline. So that's really where my my beef comes from is the very PVP nature and kind of this open nihilism more than the idea of a meme coin. So I guess that's why I'm the bad guy today. <laughs> Steven, did that stoke any thoughts when you? Uh, yeah, a lot of thoughts. I mean, I feel like I, I used to be like Ledger for sure. Like when I first entered this space, maybe like 11 years ago now, I guess, as like an investor, you know, I thought my <laughs> job was to um, be really smart. Right. And like, oh, my God, there's going to be this stuff that will change the world. And if I just think about the stuff that's actually going to change the world and buy it before other people do, then I will enrich myself with my huge, big, uh, beautiful brain. And then this this cycle, you know, continued um, for for one or two more cycles where I kept trying to be like smart and impose my own idea of what I thought was the market should be on the market and sort of ignoring what the market was was actually telling me. And And, and now here in cycle number four, I guess, like I am really, really, you know, a, a self-admitted trying to hit myself over the head with a frying pan, lower my IQ, <laughs> you know, like trader, you know, I'm, I'm trying to see at what the market is, is telling me and make money by, by following the market, not t saying what the market uh, should do. The, the market undeniably loves the memes, right? And I and I think Ledger probably wouldn't even disagree with that. I think his uh, his uh, the thing he takes exception with is the the nihilism, the fact that there's not something deeper going on here. I guess, but I would say that even with like something like Doge, all the stuff you described about Bitcoin, it's not really that different from Doge, right? Like it's not like Bitcoin has any specific utility or cash flows, right? It is literally, as you said yourself, an idea, a meme. And then you, you, but you're basically like, well, the purpose of this meme is better than, than the Doge meme, right? But that's just a very subjective sort of thought. Now, not, not entirely. There's a scarcity element to Bitcoin, which is part of the idea. And so one element is it's a better idea and the market cap proves it. The, the capitalist environment proves it. When you look at one market cap versus the other, the forever supply or relatively forever supply of Dogecoin has been a limiter to some degree on Doge, Doge's potential to usurp Bitcoin over the last 10 year period, which it, it had an opportunity to do so for a decade. That's a long time to be able to make up that network effect and it couldn't. And that's because Bitcoin's idea was stronger. I, I would probably make the exact opposite argument, to be honest. I think one of the downsides of the sort of Bitcoin like scarcity thing, I mean, I object to this idea that scarcity just makes something inherently valuable anyway. But like, e even assuming it does, what it does is it, it creates an incentive for like hoarding. Like people want to buy Bitcoin, bury it in the backyard, 
give it to their kids and then not share it with anybody, right? So one of the nice things about having a supply that does inflate a little bit more is that you 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 have distribution. Uh, the coin gets into the hands of more people. People want to spend it, use it uh, use it as money, maybe buy a Tesla with it someday. So I, I think there are a lot of positives to getting the coins in in people's hands and and, and the network effects of that. Um, you know, go towards like a long term uh, value add. Right. Dude, you just made the exact argument of a Fed inflationist for targeting <laughs> two percent inflation or whatever, like some minimal inflation to encourage uh, capital endeavors essentially to beat inflation. And I don't disagree with that, except for uh, in, in in this scenario, like there's not a significant market for Dogecoin or other inf like highly inflationary, you know, created assets to create those capitalistic environments, like to create the things on top. Um, and I, I, there are some things that can do that. That's the whole point of the dollar, I guess, to like challenge, you know, challenging people through the inflation of the dollar and for the Fed's targets for how the dollar should work to do the same thing. Like if it if inflation's two percent, figure out a, go, a way to go earn seven or eight or ten percent. Uh, go do something with those dollars because if you just hoard them, they'll become inherently less valuable over time. And and Bitcoin and other deflationary hedges are are. Um, they're a counter to that. Now they can be limited by that for sure. Like creating economic activity on top of something is good. That's why David and I, for example, like really like the Ethereum network because you're creating economic activity, programmatic activity on top of a blockchain using the truthfulness of the chain. And in that scenario, thanks to the way ETH mechanics work, it both burns ETH and creates an environment for economic activity on top of it. So I think you can make those arguments, but like Doge, for example, is not exactly like going going a route of do something on top. It's just inflating. So you just need more people to buy into the idea to outpace the inflation, which is fine. But I just don't think it's as powerful as Bitcoin's uh, like certainty of 21 million coins and which does in which does inspire hoarding and that's why you'll never have just bitcoin you need the other side of the equation right you need the defla you know the uh, not deflationary technically but like the um known known level of inflation and limited um limited supply of bitcoin and then the other side of it is the other stuff and that's why gambling and coin creation has been so popular for so long and i'm not i'm not trying to say it's like terrible i'm just saying most of it's going to zero <laughs> you know and people need to understand that like don't marry your bags even your whiff bags most of everything in this space is going to zero right like if it's going to zero is a justification for like why something is generally like a bad idea for you to invest in then this this whole space is going to fall apart right yeah, like, like how many trade. how many of the like even even the top 500 altcoins do you want to buy and then go into a coma for 15 years and then wake up with you know maybe half of your net worth in like like two yeah yeah and 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 that's that's kind of my point um and and that's that's for things that have a, pr a productive component or things that don't like but for things that clearly do not, they don't know what they stand for other than here's a funny thing that I thought of 15 minutes ago. Wait, here's why a is that not it. something that's great to stand for, though? Like what what is what is better to stand for than me memes are amazing. Sure, there are some things that are better to stand for than memes, but memes are a pretty good thing. Like the, the Internet freaking loves memes. There's an entire like three generations now of people on planet Earth who love memes and communicate in memes and and share memes and like memes are a sense of social currency to them, right? There is value in being the first person to sort of like find and spread a meme, right? You get cred amongst your peers, right? It, it, it's, it's, it's an obvious like next step that we would sort of financialize that to, to some degree because like there is like a, a, a market value there, even though it's not a value that the sort of traditional boomer world of finance can sort of put in some sort of, of box. It's, it's a new kind of thing much like crypto is a new kind of thing, much like Bitcoin was a new kind of thing, and much like Ethereum especially was even like a new kind of thing within within crypto. Does, does that resonate? There, there was a line from uh, Jacob from Zora that I resonated with, which was that um, meme coins will just be called memes in the future. 
Which I think he's just kind of implying like the actual instantiation of a token, a financial asset that goes, you know, alongside an actual meme that we know of, like an internet JPEG. Uh, he's saying that these are actually just becoming the same things. And so the token itself is the meme. And so in the year 2024, in the year of, you know, the crypto age, memes are tokens is a take that he that he had. I think that's stupid. Uh, <laughs> like <laughs> to say, here's here's token. Now let's try to meme it so our bag doesn't go to zero. Like I, I'm OK with the idea of here's a meme that should be tokenized, like create a viral event and then there's an economic value that can be associated to that. I think that's actually very interesting. And I think we will see that's kind of the tokenization of everything. But like on the flip side of that, trying to create the everythingization of a token is stupid. Like tokenize things that exist. Don't try to turn like create something to exist because you have a token. Like it's just stupid. It's you need I think you need a baseline idea. You need a baseline concept that mm -hmm. you're trying to establish economic value for, whether it's a meme, whether it's inflationary or deflationary, whether it's utility, have something then tokenize. Don't say here's token, let's create something. I think that's just the backwards way of doing it. Okay, so so wait, so what, what you're saying is like the, the Doge meme was already a meme on the internet and then the Doge blockchain came about and you're saying that that is a normal expected uh, yeah it was uh, the tokenization of, of a thing versus yeah the opposite what, what like, about geo bowden who joe <laughs> joe biden already existed <laughs> and was already you know having mean power in of itself and now there's geo bowden like where does that land on your on your like viability spectrum it, it could be okay and there is this like the survival of the fittest you know there, there might be a thousand memes based on Joe Biden and Donald Trump or the election mm -hmm. and only one survives because, uh, you know, 999 die. And I understand that. And that's where a lot of this, like everything goes to zero stuff comes from. But still, it's based on an idea, a mockery of our political system. Right. And I can get down with that. That's not what I'm trying to be against. I'm just yeah, I think the vast majority of people, they don't they don't care about any of that. Like they're, they're just pretending the idea matters. All they want, all they want is the nihilistic idea of I'm going to take Stephen's money before he takes my money. And um, I don't I don't really like that idea. So uh, there's this concept out there that like this idea that meme coins are more honest than actual real projects in crypto. Because you can, you know, talk shit about all the meme coins that you want, but like there is just a graveyard of attempted legitimate projects that the founders had every intent to rug at the end of the day. Uh, like Do Kwan, for example, made three failed, like two or three failed uh, algo stable coins before he made Terra Luna, right? Uh, and like maybe Terra Luna even was a legitimate attempt at something, but then it's still ending up in the same graveyard right next to all the scams with like less than uh, desirable founders who were just coming into crypto, making an, an, an alt layer one just to get rich. Right. Like, look, look, there, I can I can name so many names of like people in this graveyard. So like the whole idea here is like memes, meme coins don't pretend to do anything. And they're like actually democratizing in terms of just like how the retail little guy and their access to information can play in the arena that is crypto. Uh, and so like we, we can just like take off the, uh, the emperor can just take off their clothes and we can just like deal with everything just as totally naked and honest and transparent. Now I, I have like uh, qualms with that uh, because I think that's fake transparency or it can be fake transparency. Uh, but Stephen, uh, maybe you can continue this like line of reasoning, this this thought and like what you see in that corner of the meme meme world. Yeah, I mean, this this is my favorite thing about memes is that they sort of like rip the mask off and say like this is this is what's happening, right? There's there's an authenticity about them, there's an honesty about them that's kind of refreshing in the space, you know. You know, first we created altcoins and they they stole people's Bitcoin, and then we created ICOs and they stole people's ETH. And then we evolved coins with complex Ponzi-nomics and layers of weird DeFi elements to lock up your money while people dumped on you and you couldn't understand what was happening. And then we created pictures <laughs> and got people to burn thousands of dollars in gas just to mint them. And we raked them over the coals with like 10% royalty fees and all sorts of transaction fees only to completely rug them when they discovered like the concept of liquidity and how it works in the opposite direction when you're 
you're you're trying to get out. Um, and then of course we have like the 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 new favorite scam now, which is like the the FDV scam, where you just issue all of these tokens to early insiders. You control the float, and then you hire these market makers to brilliantly like inflate the price of your um token during market euphoria and distribute it on unsuspecting retail only to have it crash 97% under the weight of all the unsustainable token inflation, right? Like this is this is all nonsense. And I think memes are a reaction to that. Like much in the same way that the young, like every younger generation rebels against some of the ways of the older generation's world, right? They, 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 they try to impose this world on them, this set of rules, this is how you have to think, this is how you have to behave. And they go, no, we, we don't wanna do that. Now. Oftentimes, like a large part of that rebellion is very misguided and it goes awry. But within that rebellion, there are these like amazing seeds that are planted that grow into something great. And I don't think memes are some panacea and they're all like awesome, but there's 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 something good here. Right. And I think one of the things people will come to realize is that what one of the scarcest things in, in the world, right, is attention. Like having attention, I think, is more important than building a good product. I think it's actually way more important to to get attention first and then build the product. Like a lot of people build products and they never get used. They never have intention, uh, worse uh, uh, attention, worse products gain traction in the world. It happens like all the time. So for now, these things are just these kind of weird little idiosyncrasies that we trade back and forth. But I think you're already seeing the seeds of how this can work in the opposite direction. Like. I'm pretty sure this is what Jordy is planning with. Like, have you heard of Puff? Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm pretty sure Puff is like doing the kind of, this is going to be like a real project. We're actually going to start it with the meme and we're going to use the attention to funnel the people into the real pro uh, product. Like we're going to use that attention for good. And I, I think we're going to yeah. see so memes. Like Puff is a like meme that. coin on Mantle. Yes. Uh, and it's being like bootstrapped by like the Mantle community, the Mantle thought leaders, people like Jordy. Uh, and then the idea is like that actually will turn into something with uh, a team with good intentions with a with a North Star and they will build something. But there's a starting with a meme first is what you're saying. Yeah. And and, and I, I think it's I think it's brilliant. And I, I look forward to like more experimentation in that regard, like it, it, using these memes for, for good. <laughs> yeah, this is an impossible argument for me to win. Uh, for what it's worth. Like, because, because it's a really good one? The, because your argument is really good? <laughs> no, no, it's just like, uh, there's obviously going to be, you know, good, like some good things that come out of it. But I don't think that that's a reason to celebrate the overall idea, right? Like, I think that I... I, I'm not going to celebrate like this idea that all is futile. So like live now, dump on others, you know, you know, kind of this Sodom and Gomorrah lifestyle, like everything, <laughs> <laughs> everything is pointless. Um, so screw it. I'm going to, I'm going to live for the now. That's just not my mindset. Right. So like, yes, there is, there is, uh, there, there are things in there. There are like little bits of light amongst, you know, fire and 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 uh darkness you know like there's a little there's there's good that can come out of it but the overwhelming majority just sucks right and like i think the intent of man to like live and do well should matter and um i'm not i, I don't like a fair distribution is fine like what you just talked about with that meme coin and what their purpose is but for everyone there's unsuspecting retail that like the same people that are behind the high FDV scams are like all uh, also I'm sure creating and doing pump and dump meme coin stuff. And so like you have the same victims essentially just different methods. And, and even those are, are uh, there, it's always people trying to figure out a way around whatever exists. And you talked earlier about people being upset, you know, you kind of have the revolution and then something comes out of that. Um, but like, there's also just the people in the revolution that just want to take advantage of the revolution, right? Mm -hmm. There was no con, there was no real idea. It was again, that nihilism. And that's what I'm against. I just, I believe that we live for something and we can choose to live for something. And I will, I will personally choose to tr participate in a way that I, par I believe in. Like, and so 
I'm just not going to be the guy shilling a hundred and fifty thousand dollar market cap piece of crap scam coin that just popped up because I bought it early and now I'm going to tell other people about it because that you know it's just just unethical behavior in my perspective. Mm -hmm. And so I think what we're doing is we're excusing whether it's the high FTV scam that's got the suit on or whether it's the one that comes out of like a telegram and you and your buddies, you know, Unibot sniped it. It's just unethical behavior. And I think if you fail to call that out, then you're going to burn the whole thing to the ground. And so I think that like we need to set a standard for ourselves to live a little bit higher. That's all I'm asking for is just live a little bit higher, like have a little bit of ethics in our uh, in our lifestyles. And like, I think, will some people get really, really rich doing unethical things? Sure. But that's like, that's not all there is to life, I guess. Mantle, formerly known as BitDAO, is the first DAO-led Web3 ecosystem, all built on top of Mantle's first core product, the Mantle Network, a brand new high-performance Ethereum Layer 2 built using the OP stack, but uses Eigenlayer's data availability solution instead of the expensive Ethereum Layer 1. Not only does this reduce Mantle Network's gas fees by 80%, but it also reduces gas fee volatility, providing a more stable foundation for Mantle's applications. The Mantle Treasury is one of the biggest DAO-owned treasuries, which is seeding an ecosystem of projects from all around the Web3 space for Mantle. Mantle already has sub-communities from around Web3 onboarded, like Game7 for Web3 Gaming, and Bybit for TVL and Liquidity and OnRamps. So if you want to build on the Mantle network, Mantle is offering a grants program that provides milestone-based funding to promising projects that help expand, secure, and decentralize Mantle. If you want to get started working with the first DAO-led Layer 2 ecosystem, check out Mantle at mantle.xyz and follow them on Twitter at 0xMantle. Are you launching a token? Is it already live? How are you managing the legal and tax obligations for providing token grants to your team? It's no secret that token management gets complicated. Between learning all the legal language and tax obligations in every country that your team is in, token grant management can feel like an obstacle course, but it doesn't have to. That's where Toku steps in. Toku provides practical tools to handle token grants, allowing for effective oversight of token distributions and payroll tax compliance for employees, contractors, advisors, and investors. They also handle tax withholding through their real-time tax calculations that can be done by Toku or integrated into any payroll EOR providers in any jurisdiction. Toku is a trusted provider of Protocol Labs, DYDX Foundation, Mina Protocol, and many more. Get started for free and make token compensation simple at toku.com slash bankless. Celo is the mobile-first, EVM-compatible, carbon-negative blockchain built for the real world. Driving real-world use cases like mobile payments and mobile DeFi, and with Opera Minipay as one of the fastest-growing Web3 wallets, Celo is seeing a meteoric rise with over 300 million transactions and 1.5 million monthly active addresses. And now, Celo is looking to come home to Ethereum as a Layer 2. Optimism, Polygon, Matter Labs, and Arbitrum have all thrown their hats in the ring for the Celo Layer 2 to build upon their stacks. Why the competition? The Celo Layer 2 will bring huge advantages like a decentralized sequencer, off-chain data availability secured by Ethereum validators, and one-block finality. What does that all mean for you? With Celo Layer 2, gas fees will stay low, and you can even pay for gas natively using ERC20 tokens, sending crypto to phone numbers across wallets using Social Connect. But Celo is a community-governed protocol. This means that Celo needs you to weigh in and make your voice heard. Join the conversation in the Celo forums, follow Celo on Twitter, and visit Celo.org to shape the future of Ethereum. I think one way to kind of maybe like categorize this conversation is there's like meme coin theory and then there's meme coin in practice. Um, and I think Doge, one of the reasons why we talk about Doge and why everyone talks about the potential of Doge is that meme coin in theory turned into practice in this very pure, holistic, heartwarming way. Uh, but as we've seen with every single cycle, like the cycles that Steven was talking about with the ICOs, like what was the first ICO? Oh, it was Ethereum. What was the second uh, ICO? Augur, a legitimate project that the product itself didn't work out, but like no one really felt scammed about that because it was a good attempt. And then everyone realized that like, oh, you could do this ICO thing. You can attract a bunch of ETH. And then like the euthanasia roller coaster was kickstarted. And then we ended up in like the ICO shitcoin waterfall that was 2017. And you can repeat that for DeFi summer. Like who started DeFi summer? Compound, Robert Leshner. Great governance tokens. We needed all of that. Kicked off the governance rev revolution. How did it end? Like 1000 APY pool twos. Uh, and so yeah. like do meme coins are taking kind of the same arc where like it may be meme coins are taking the same arc where we start with Dogecoin, but then we end with like this PVP. I just created a meme coin. Now everyone buy it and I'm going to sell it tomorrow. 
and the result has been the same in all of these pretty much where liquidity gets spread out like way out to a point to where you kind of have this house of cards on the market that needs to correct and go back to the things that do carry something like the carry some value. And, and yeah, maybe me, there are some memes that survive. Um, and there's some, there's some, you know, suit coins <laughs> that survive, but like, there's a lot of death as well. And I think you're just creating a perpetual cycle. You're just doing like a different version of the same crap where you're fracturing liquidity over and over again. And, um, you know, I don't, I, I just don't really buy into the idea that like, it's, it's purer than before. Cause you're just, mm -hmm. you know, not pretending anymore. Um, because there are very, there's very real projects, but it's not the only thing you can get rich in. That's not my point. Like I, I, and I'm all for people having opportunity to elevate themselves in a capitalistic way. Um, I think they're even in that, there's different ways to do it. If you say I'm going to launch a meme coin and it's I'm going to like purposefully pump and dump this thing so I can make a buck because, you know, I live in this nihilistic environment and screw this guy and and, and all these other people screw them. I'm going to I'm going to collect mine like that's just as bad. Right. <laughs> like but it if you're, there's an open market and you're not trying to personally manipulate that market and you're making a trade in that environment, then fine, whatever. Like you're just one of the market participants. Like I think, I think that's a truer expression of how to go about this in an like honorable way, if you will. And I just refuse to live in a world where we have to throw all that aside and it's just the wild west forever. And there are no morals or ethics or anything like I just that's not my world. And that's my that's my whole point about it. And I just see a lot of that as you see this escalation, if you will, of meme coin culture in the same way that you saw it with ICOs and pre-sales and everything else like and NFTs and all the all the other like as it goes further and further out like it gets worse and worse to the degree that it just needs to explode and like have like a jubilee of the coins, <laughs> you know, like just like just make it all go away and start over again from, you know, the Phoenix from the ashes type of the environment. I, I, I kind of object to this whole painting of everything is this is just financial nihilism, right? Like we have, we have a meme coin channel in our discord and nobody in there is nihilist. Everybody's like vibing and having like an amazingly fun time. And the idea that never before in human history that everybody get together with their friends and try to make a bunch of money and get rich quick, uh, like that did that didn't exist. And that's just a product of like uh, Zoomer nihilism or I'm not, something. I'm not you saying know? it didn't exist. I'm just saying it's always fun while you're winning, and then it's not. Sure, of course. And like, I, I think there is a much higher sort of self-realization in the people trading memes that what they are doing is like a very zero sum game. I think in previous cycles, people were buying these alt, they literally thought they were going to do something and make them money. It's very hard for anybody with an IQ above 60 to convince themselves that they're really going to buy Baden and hold it for 10 years and become like a, a like a, be worth like thirty million dollars, right? So th there's like a element of like self awareness and in and, and honesty and in in what is happening. Um, I, I would argue that like an element of the Bitcoin vision is kind of like a little more like nihilistic or like dystopian, right? Like this idea that crypto is going to succeed because we all just buy this coin and it just goes up as like the rest of the world buys. We don't even do anything with it. We just watch the number go up. Now we don't even buy it on chain. We buy it in like an ETF, right? <laughs> I think uh, it's less, I think it is dystopian, but it's not nihilist. Sure. All right. Cool. It's dystopian. I'll, you, you can choose your dystopia, right? I mean, I yeah. mean, David, you, you're a big advocate. You, you love crypto, right? You think uh -huh. crypto is going to be a thing and change the world. Do, does crypto become a thing because a bunch of people buy Bitcoin in their Coinbase account and look at the number go up? Or does crypto become a thing because users are, are start using the chain and using the products? Like what better way to bootstrap people into this ecosystem has there ever been than like this meme coin frenzy? Like people can't go on Coinbase and like trade Popcat or whatever the the meme of the day is, right? They have to be like, uh, how do I how do I use a wallet? How do I use uh, Jupiter? How do I do all these things, right? And although yes, a lot of these people are going to get burned in a particular way, I think that five years from now, 10 years from now, when crypto is like a, a, a big thing, right? And you talk to people, you talk to like the next 
Van Spencer, if you will, of like 20 years from now, right? Whatever. And you're like, how did you get involved in crypto? Everybody has the same story when they get involved in crypto. They heard about something, they thought it was they cool, they dumb. bought something and then they got burned. <laughs> but in the process, an idea went off in their head and they became hooked and then they sort of climbed that wall and, and became like a user, an advocate and get everybody else in the space. Like, I think the same thing is going to happen here. Yeah. And like when I got into crypto, I was very much... Um illusioned by the ico mania i thought substratum was going to change the face of the internet right like i thought basic attention token was going to meaningfully change our relationship with advertisers uh and it really wasn't until like 2018 i was like oh i just like paid a very expensive lesson but that's how i thought about it It it's like i paid for a free lesson in like real markets and incentives and human behavior and all that kind of stuff and maybe to steven's point to the meme coin point uh meme coin point uh, is like you very much are aware of what you are doing when you buy like do- Doge with hat, dog with hat. Like, you know, exactly like you're like, I am not being disillusioned by the founder of Substratum who thinks he's going to like change the structure of the Internet. I'm literally buying a dog with a hat. So I can appreciate that. Um, and but like th- I think there's also inside of this debate between meme coins, good or bad, is also a time frame difference. I saw this uh, this classic bell curve tweet. Whereas like in the center, you have the middle of the curve and the guy's like, no, you need fundamentals. You can't invest in dogs with hats like you must. Meme coins are too nihilistic, blah, 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 blah. And then on the left and the right side, it's like, uh, I don't I'm having fun and I'm getting rich. Uh, that, that's what the, the two lines like I'm having fun getting rich. And those two sides of the left and right of the curve work when number goes up. But when number goes down, you really want fundamentals. Like this whole concept of like interest rates is like anti is an anti meme coin concept. Like the higher interest rates are in the world, the less meme coins will exist because when interest rates are super high, you need systems that produce cash flows that can pay for the interest rates. Uh, and so like a lot of this stuff, I think, was really contained inside of one cycle. And it only works while people make money. And as soon as people stop making money, as soon as like inflation picks up, as soon as we're thinking about like, okay, what what is my like retirement plan? What is my 10 plus year time horizon thesis? Like as soon as people think in longer terms and what they need to start thinking about fundamentals and all of a sudden the air goes out of the meme coin uh, balloon. And so like, I think that a lot of the debates is like, are meme coins are good or bad? Also kind of needs to be framed in like the time frame. Like meme coins are good in the short term but can they be good in the long term i think is where ledger will say like no they literally cannot it's, it's structurally impossible for them to be good in the long term for the most part yeah like when you take it holistically uh, there will be success stories but like i think it's a maybe it's a more efficient lottery right like and i i don't really like the lottery i certainly don't like us like the concept of a state-run lottery and let's send kids to college because we took money from poor people who had very little hope so they just did this thing instead like, I'm just going to go buy some scratch offs at the gas station with the last 20 bucks I got because I have no other hope. And so I'm just going to do this. And that sends somebody that makes like 200 grand a year to the University of Georgia full time. <laughs> you know, like that's highly dystopian and I don't like that at all. And so a lot a lot of times when people talk about like why they're opting in to just gambling on meme coins, it's the same kind of thing. Like, how else are we going to make it, bro? You know, and 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 I and I get that it's maybe it's more efficient than that lottery, and um, I I just I just don't like it. Like I, I'm allowed to just not like something, and that's all I really said when I got trolled for this tweet is I just don't like it. I don't like the concept of that. I choose. I would rather believe in something, both that I'm investing in, trading, whatever else. Like I've always I said this, David. I don't even know how many times I've talked to you personally about this. Like. If I'm going to hold something, I want it to be something I can sleep at night and realize like I'm okay with this. And every now and then will I go participate in the trade, like the overwhelming like size of the wave that's crashing? (laughs) Like is it just one that I'll tack on to? Sure. But at the end of the day, like I would rather um, hold something, invest in something where I have some fundamental belief about what that thing is and why I hold it and why I'm participating. And I think for a market to be functional, you need a reasonable number of people and a reasonable volume of dollars that are thinking that way, or else the whole thing's going to look dumber than the tulip bulb mania uh, of the 1600s that everybody makes fun of us for. Do you do you in, do you invest in art? Do you invest in NFTs? Do you do you believe those things are a, 
investment vehicles to a degree, or at least like high probability speculative assets? High probability? No, I wouldn't do high pro say high probability, but like fine art, you don't think is? Uh if it's already been established, right? Like that's the um but then your upside is is lower. It's more of a traditional investment vehicle. Like the difference between me buying a Picasso and buying a piece of like class A real estate, like might be pretty much the same type of returns. See see, like I, I don't think there's much of a difference at all between like buying dogecoin and and buying you know fine nfts i don't think there's that much of a difference between buying dogecoin and like buying uh shares of like lvmh right like like sure lvmh makes widgets and people buy them right but but like under underneath all of that is just an idea like the thing just has value because like it has been memed into value like i'm not the population I, I, likes it I've talked about the network effects of a blockchain forever like that. I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you on that. But like, if, if you think that it's like a legitimate investment to invest in brands like brands like LVMH, for example, is investing in Doge not the same thing as investing in any brand? It's an idea that you think has traction that is growing and it is growing at a rate that will let I've you get a return on your capital. to say anything negative about Doge. You keep saying I'm like anti-Doge. I've never said anything negative sure, about Doge. Sure, but if Doge. you accept Doge and you accept the idea of brands, then you have to accept the idea that there won't just be one brand. There will be no, many downstream like, brands. No, that's like saying... Well, if you believe in Nike, you should believe in Schmikey because I made it. <laughs> you know, like. No, it's not. It's like saying if you believe in Nike, when Nike made shoes, you had to believe in the idea that somebody would also create like Adidas shoes and then Converse shoes would be like, like the, the, I think that, that's I, not the same at all. I think the vast majority of what's created looks a lot more like Schmikey than Adidas. Like I, I don't think very many of of the what very many of the things that we see out there and that end up like um shilled by people with significant followings are truly a different take on a similar concept and instead they're just like a me too pump and dump of and course, I think of that course that's true but if what you were saying if the opposite of what you were saying was true that was like oh yeah i look in the meme space and i see all these really great brands that are the next doge then there wouldn't be any returns there because the market would already see that. Like you can't have one without the other. And people acknowledge this. People acknowledge it's a high risk game. But there's also some per there's some purpose in establishing accountability in that ecosystem. Like that is important. And when there's zero consequence for creating like a thousand schmikes, then that's you're you're gonna self destruct the thing that was good in the first but the, place. But that's why I like crypto. We just like fast run all of the stuff in the real world and just blow everything up, and we learn all the lessons ourselves and redo everything in like super super uh, compressed time frames, right? And you're already seeing the market adapt to some of this. Like we have like these token checkers now, for example, where now like even people who are like amateur crypto people know like okay, there's a meme coin. I got to run it through the token checker. I got to see if there's like. A whitelist. I got to see if like the dev minted himself all the tokens. Is the liquidity locked, right? And this is going to keep like evolving, right? Like the, this. This is this is just a crypto thing. There are no guardrails. Do you think there should be any accountability, like, for the person who's creating all the all the ones that are not like a, a real attempt at establishing meme value, like or whatever? Like, no. I think it, I think if you fair deploy a token with no attempts to like defraud people like I, we have we have laws in the real world right against certain financial crimes just because you commit that financial crime in crypto doesn't mean like you you you're not responsible for that financial crime right so like i'm all for holding people in the crypto world responsible for committing like fraud or anything that could be perceived as fraud right but if everybody is just mass launching means with like fair token distributions right I don't I don't have a problem with that. Like, I don't have a problem with 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 people playing that that game. I, I, I don't. So if I created if I created a coin and I called it OK Grandma or whatever, like somebody's done these with that's with me that's already. already created now, by the way. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> but like, but like if I if I create one essentially memeing myself for being a freaking old boomer, like let's call it the Bama Boomer coin. OK. And so we got the Bama <laughs> Boomer coin. And I say, listen, I'm going to go. I'm going to create the Bama Boomer coin. It's worthless. But if you guys want to make fun of me, just buy this coin at this contract address and, you know, off we go. Like, but 
I am disclosing naturally that I think it's valueless. But if you think the Bama Boomer meme is valuable, you don't think that like there's a responsibility that I have to limit the way that I go about things and say things because I'm essentially established. I'm creating the cliff for someone to jump off of where I know they're going to fall and break their bones. You know, like that's all that's really happening there. Like some clever people are going to win off of it and they probably will just because I said that. Like somebody's going to go create it because they see this podcast. Somebody's going to make a couple thousand bucks off of it or whatever. And there's going to be somebody that's like, well, I guess I'm just going to jump off this cliff. Maybe I'll make it because Bama Boomer is a good coin and this is a funny idea and it's going to be me. And then they break their legs. Like, am I responsible if I'm the creator of that for establishing that arena where that occurred? Like, I just don't think it, it doesn't carry real value. And please don't. Somebody will make Bam and Boomer. Don't buy it. It's stupid. It's stupid. <laughs> okay, so two things there. Like one, no, of course you're not responsible. And then I, I, I don't know. Like people, sure, there are people in the world who want, like, they're the Elizabeth Warren types, and they think we should throw you in jail for that. Like, I, I'm not that person. Do it. Tran- if you're being transparent and you're saying like, here's a cliff, but like, don't jump off of it, and somebody jumps off the cliff, right? Like. It, that's that's not your problem, right? Uh, the the second part is like I, I just view memes as like a in a fundamentally different way than you do. Like you you're like there's no purpose, it has no value. But like in my mind, these are these are just speculative marketplaces for attention, right? I've once again not said memes don't have value. Like, you said well, you said ba- Bama Boomer doesn't have any. That value. has no value. It's but not it a does meme. have it's value your, because no. you as this like. You've said it Beloved four times grandma now, entity with like clout <laughs> on crypto Twitter. You have attention. So stuff you put into the world like has attention. And when people are buying meme coins, they're buying a piece of that attention or speculating on like how much attention that will actually have. Like that's what's actually kind of happening here at like a base level with meme coins. And I think as more and more people realize that this is just sort of like a speculative like attention marketplace, like you can kind of view it through uh, maybe a different lens because we all agree that attention is a very valuable thing in this this crazy world we live in. So, so one of the reasons, like fundamentals in a token, for example, like MakerDAO has had some of the best fundamentals in crypto over the longest amount of time, and it's one of the most ignored, generally speaking, ignored coins until finally, just like the fundamentals became so strong that like even VCs had to like pick up on it, and now it's. Its revenue is Even its the VCs attention. Had to pick up on it. The, yeah, <laughs> the slowest actors in the space. Well, always the last one to the party. Uh, well, like on, on public markets, yeah, yeah. It's like the, yeah. the fundamentals markets, were interested. so attention grabbing that all of a sudden they showed up in the market price of MKR finally. Uh, and so, like maybe like to kind of reframe what meme coins are, they're like they're not equities, right? They're not trying to produce fundamentals. They're not trying to produce cash flows. They're commodities on attention in a particular flavor, in a particular arena. Uh, and so like, um, uh, like Doge, Doge with hat is capturing the attention that whatever Doge with hat can produce. That one's a little self-recursive. There are other meme coins that are like running in parallel to like in real world, like non-crypto stuff. And so, like, as the attention, like, I'm just, like Taylor Swift coin, for example, uh, Taylor Swift gets big. Taylor Swift coin would also get big because it is this like community supported, unofficial commodity that is commoditizing the attention around Taylor Swift. And commodities are inherently zero sum because like oil does not produce dividends. It is a it is a commodity. It gets consumed once, right? Uh, and so there is no cash flows to oil. There is no cash flows to gold. And so, like, maybe this is why we were talking about when gold is, like, perhaps inherently nihilistic because you don't think that you can produce anything new out of it. Uh, And so maybe this is, like, reframing of meme coins as, like, pseudo-attention commodities. Uh, Does that make you feel any better or worse, Ledger? I guess I'm indifferent. I mean, (laughs) I told you, like, this is going to be hard for me to win because it's mostly me saying what I'm not that very willing to participate in uh, because I don't value many of these segments of the attention market, if you will. And I do believe in the attention market. That's not, that's not my point at all. Um, I don't, I don't believe in the gambleification of that attention market. And there's just many things with regards to gambling and attention, I guess, that I don't, I choose not to participate in. It's not to say I think something should be illegal necessarily. I just, I, I wish that there was a little more market accountability for market accountability, meaning by participants choices not to be there. Right. Like, than there is. And um, I was thinking about this one, like 
the, do you ever seen that article where it was something like this one guy sends like 15% of the world spam emails or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and, 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 and somehow he was like, somebody figured out how to block a lot of his stuff and he just, it stopped happening. And so an example is I'm not saying email is bad. I'm not saying email marketing is bad. I'm saying, can we call this guy bad? Like this douchebag that's sending the <laughs> same spam to, you know, tens of millions of people every day. Like that's not, that's, I just don't like that, you know, and there's, and, and what we're saying is for the, all the people that are creating that we're not, as, we're not, we're not just willing to say that's stupid or that's bad. Like they were like, well, maybe he's going to make a buck off of it. And I got to receive, you know, 50,000 spam emails every, every month because of it. And like, I don't, I don't like that. That's, that's my point. I mean, if your point is that memes as a whole are, uh, are actually really good and there's this segment of like meme coinery is bad. If you want to just say like a fraudster, profit maxi spammer, sure, sure I, I won't, I won't argue with you. And that's been my that. whole point. Like, and that's, but there's a high ratio of that in this current meme coin iteration, right? Like it, it's because we're just like YOLO, everything is fine. We're enabling so much more of that. And we're tolerating, for example, people that I think are making irresponsible decisions like, bro, Bama, Bama Boomer's the future. You know, you need to invest. I got a freaking bag when it was cheap. I'm up 10x. I'm going to be up 10x more after I shill it to 250,000 people. And a bunch of people that just want the lotto tickets are chasing it. And the next thing you do is dump on their face like that person is the one that needs to be held accountable. And it takes human beings to hold them accountable. I think this is really kind of get, drilling down into the heart of this whole crux, which is we talked about how like shady and terrible crypto has been in its history, the graveyards of scams that have come and gone and made very few people very rich to the cost of retail. Are meme coins better or worse than the attempts at legitimacy that scams or accidental frauds have been? Ledger, that's a question to you. I think they're worse, but they're not that much worse than what we've been forced into with real projects because the government has been been the one that has forced us into non-fair distributions of real projects. So I can get back to blaming the government about like their approach to regula- regulation and crypto is what's the real culprit here. Mm. Because if we had a cleaner path towards equitable distribution of real projects and you had a real pathway for bringing real stuff to market, then you could bring real stuff to market to everyday people and that would be better. So this is the response. It's just the, it's like a rubber band response. That's the wrong one, in my opinion. Steven, thoughts? Yeah, I mean, my, 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 my generalized thoughts on this is just that ideas are powerful. Ideas have value. We've been focused a lot on crypto as like building, you know, quote unquote projects that, that do things, but, but ideas and things that have mind share undeniably have value, right? And you, you can envision an end state of this cycle where virtually every single zoomer who touches crypto has like dog with hat in their wallet. Right. What, what does a world look like where there are just millions upon millions of people who have this coin, the coin is worth hundreds of billions of dollars, right? Like we already saw like yesterday, right. They raised $650,000 to put the, the hat on the sphere. Right. What can a coin like that do when it has the attention of a thousand times as many people as it already has, as those people are like way wealthier than they are now, right? Like there, there's like interesting stuff I think that could could be done and, and, and come of that. And there, there's undeniably some value there. It's not valueless. Like every other thing in crypto, right? In the sort of phase one, we take an idea and we run way too far with it and we jump off the ledge and people fall down and break a leg and get hurt. And yeah, that's obviously going to happen here. Obviously. My position is it's a little more transparent, at least this, this time around. It's like when you have like a kid and you know, he's like wants to climb a tree and you're, you, 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 you know, he's going to climb the tree, but you're like, all right, well, you, you're going to fall and hurt yourself, but you'll learn the hard way. And that's, that, that's a, that's a better thing for me than like pretending there's something there that, there's not, and then somebody gets hurt, and then they feel like very disillusioned, like they were lied to in a way, and that kind of creates like lasting impact. So I think this is a, it's the same thing we've done over and over again. It's a slightly better version of it, 
But like the previous experiments we ran, there was a really good nugget of, of truth to them. And in later cycles, those things blossomed into to really, really good projects, really, really good ideas. Same thing's going to happen. Do you this have time a good around. example of one where it turned into something productive? Like, because I think the end state of what you're saying here is I hope Dog with Hat is just like Dogecoin again. Like, uh, uh, and same with Shiba Inu. But have we seen anything really of uh, like with any real productivity or like anything of these creative ideas that blossomed? with even with doge like and i like and i like doge and i think if you if you own doge because you like doge that's fine but like have we seen economic activity or like real stuff happen beyond i think like or is the maxim of that elon musk brought extra attention to it so that on snl or whatever like people bought the top of it (laughs) like uh or like maybe that onboarded some people into crypto and like they went they they went deeper down the rabbit hole in some capacity like what else what else do you think has come of that when these things have gone to where you want them to previously? Like we've had things worth tens of billions of dollars in, um, and, and what have they done so far? Well, I don't think anything in crypto has really done much so far, right? Like if you want to take a step back and think about it, right? So there's, there's sort of like a benchmark, like, yes, we've created some cool products in Ethereum land, like, yeah, Bitcoin, get an ETF, like, but the main thing we started crypto for Bitcoin is still not doing anything it said it wanted to do. Like it was, it was supposed to be a peer-to-peer cash thing, right? In the in the original white paper, and, and nobody really uses it for that. So Doge is kind of like similar to Bitcoin in that regard. Like it's like this thing that people invest in as a speculative asset. Oh, by the way, it has NFTs, right? But like I I, I think I, I can see a world in the not so distant future where Doge is transacted with in like a day to day currency and used to purchase goods more than Bitcoin is. Like I can definitely see that world, and it, and it won't invalidate Bitcoin. But like I, I can for sure see that world on the the not so distant horizon. That would be pretty funny. Um, but I, I I guess I would like to see some evidence of it. There it is a little tiresome in crypto to like. However, how long have I, seven, eight years or whatever, like in, in the space. And you're just like, you're, 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 you keep saying like, okay, when, when is some of this stuff going to come into fruition? And at some point I think the industry, like you do need to shit or get off the pot a little bit and like do something or else this like nihilistic view of meme coins does end up being kind of like the final hurrah (laughs) and, and crypto just kind of gets sent to a, a corner of the world where there's like not that much economic impact. I don't actually think that's true. I think there are things that are being created. There's real stuff happening. There's real things. And then as a result, you have this like massively long tail of, of speculative, you know, me too stuff. And and that's just part of it. Um, But I would like to see some of these things make their way to the real world. For example, like I got, interest interested in nfts not because i love the dog pictures or what you know like monkey pics or whatever like the the but i think that the inherent underlying technology of a non-fungible token has the opportunity to have incredible utility in the world i think a lot of the things we're going to put it all on the blockchain they're po- they're possible to put those things real world things on the blockchain because they are singular like they're identifiable Versus like the inter- interchangeable parts of your doge and my doge are the same doge, <laughs> right? Like they're all just, they're, 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 you know, the ERC-20, the, the tradable token versus the independent one of like, you know, this is my pudgy penguin or whatever, but not just this is my pudgy penguin, but this is how like title in real estate works. And let's put it on the blockchain. Like I, I'm ready for that, I guess, is my point. I'm kind of stubbornly waiting for like these real world applications i think it's ridiculous that like we still do things the way we do in the in the real world and crypto helps solve those but like how do we get there and i want to funnel some of these billions and billions of dollars that come into the ecosystem to like let's finally make some of that happen like that's the better world kind of mentality that i would i I think we can we can do um but it's not easy it's way harder than buying dog with hat Yeah, I mean, much like in the early days of the internet, like the internet didn't become a thing because people invested in Shopify and and PayPal. The internet became a thing because a lot of people started using it. And they started using it in the early days for mostly, you know, 
I don't know, mostly, but very numerous, like illicit purposes, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, and the same thing was with Bitcoin, like Satoshi created Bitcoin and then every, everyone was like, oh, cool, I could buy drugs with it now, right? So yeah. uh, th this is just like the the natural adoption cycle of these things to an extent. To, yeah. to expect that it's going to be any different this time around is, is silly. And like, yeah, of course I want to get to that end state. I actually think crypto is going significantly slower in its true adoption cycle than the internet did. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I, I, I agree with you. But truly, the, the crypto adoption cycle has been very slow, in my opinion, and very fast on the speculative front in the same way that the Internet was, but very slow on the adoption side of things. And I think that's partly because it's really hard, right? Like there's a financialization aspect that was less less a part of the internet where the internet was just computers. Well, I, I mean, I think the ult the internet ultimately gained a lot of uh, adoption because people used it to entertain themselves. And I think in early crypto, like, you know, it was kind of hard to entertain yourselves. And then all coin speculation became entertainment. And now this is just like another form of further and further entertainment. And I think from all that entertainment bootstrapping, we will end up with tons of users. And then I think once you have tons of users, then people actually can look at this and go like, oh, there's actually like a network effect here. There's people who have wallets on their phone. There's the infrastructure lay, uh, laid out. And now I can come in and, and build stuff because the users are there. That's like the most important thing. Are the users there? Not are people investing in the infrastructure layer? That doesn't actually bootstrap all of the, the, the future I, growth. I agree with that. And if, um, you know, people figure out ways to lose money all the time. <laughs> but like if if that's what it costs to get you know hundreds of millions of people with with crypto wallets on their phone like that's the core of the crypto experience that's missing and it's really hard by the way like get like talk about things that need addressing you know apple and and google and the way that they treat crypto transactions and crypto apps like you, the monopolization of app stores um that's one that if the government wanted to focus on something, they could they could focus on that. Like Apple's monopoly on what you can do in an app and and how the app store is controlled in terms of purchasing and what what can be done there, um, sucks. And you know the the route for crypto apps has been like progressive web apps, which is really hard. It's a really hard user experience, and I think some of the regulation uh, going on there, or some of the court battles going on in Europe right now, for example, are really interesting. Um, but if the result of all of this is that somehow we have access, like pe more people have access to crypto infrastructure through their phones, that would be a nice win. And I do think you can establish some real utility and like some of the actual purposes of crypto can can be exposed through that. And if their way to do it is to to buy these, Safe Moon is a good example of one. Like like. Total, total scam brought on board a lot of people to crypto, I guess. Like, and is that the cost? I guess, I guess if that, if your argument is that, you know, it's worth the cost, then that's, I guess that's one thing. I just, I'd rather do it with something other than safe moon or this cycle, whatever the, you know, whatever the memes of this cycle are. But like, nobody's talking about safe moon anymore, right? right. Probably like, went to jail. That's why. I mean, that yeah. was like an outright financial but, fraud yeah. Yeah. and i think important to distinguish from like the what was i don't i don't even like was it not launched fairly or like what was there what was, was like, what, so like they they Zilla did a really great right. like they got six the hour so breakdown them. on this it is okay. such a yeah. scam like literal yeah. throw people in jail yeah. scam right yeah. so yeah. they have we should we should, we should sure. put it off to the side for sure yeah. not a, not a meme coin not a meme Actual it wasn't fraud. a meme it, it was a meme coin that was also a fraud yeah. yeah. Okay. And so that's my point. Like, yeah, I, I think that's good then. Like they, you know, mm -hmm. safe and moon. How could you go wrong? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like this a lot of meme it. coins today, it's basically the same concept, right? Of like mm -hmm. the stupidity is so stupid. Right. Um, I feel like I lose brain cells most of the time in, in crypto. Um, good. Keep you keep that up and you're, you're going to be very I might rich. make some winning trades. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For once I'll be profitable. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, this has been a fantastic conversation. Really appreciate you guys both coming on here and, and sharing your thoughts and unpacking this. I think um, the entire industry is more or less having this conversation uh, with itself right now. And uh, whatever we can help facilitate that conversation, I think that'll be helpful. Steven, um, Brian, thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, I look forward to hearing in the comments how dumb I am. So <laughs> you're, you're, you're a real champion, Ledger. Yeah. Good to see you all.
All right, cheers, guys. Thanks, David. Panic sensation, you know the deal. Crypto is risky. Tokens are risky. Meme coins, probably even more risky. You can lose what you put in. We are headed west. This is the frontier. It's not for everyone, but we are glad you are with us on the bankless journey. Thanks a lot.